So there's a lot of enthusiasm around your video. So we have compiled a bunch of questions and comments from that YouTube video. Um, and we'll have um, Professor Peach react to that now. Oh, oh that's so cute. Um, okay, so Anna says, I love how a tech guy isn't using a tablet or something to teach us. He's using a marker and paper. Someone planned this. I mean, the interesting backstory is no one planned it. I got to the studio and they presented this question. I, and I said, this would be much easier to explain with pencil and paper. Uh, and then somebody in the studio went into the back and they're like, well, we have this paper. And then I happened to have a marker in my backpack. So certainly wasn't planned. Um, and I do like the, the tangible marker and paper. I think I must have gotten that from Maron when he would give his lectures. A lot of times it'd be no slides. Jerry King, no slides. He would just go up there and, and teach. Now, technology, pandemic, we often have technical aids as well, but there's something beautiful about the pacing that comes from pencil and paper. <laughs> this is a funny one. It says, this guy is suspiciously jolly for a programmer. What kind of happy pills is he on? Maybe it's interesting to talk about my morning before the recording. So my morning before the recording started with my daughter not sleeping that well, but then when she woke up, she does the thing that she often likes to do, which is like dance party. So I don't know what you guys are doing at 7 a.m., but I am in dance party mode. <laughs> so we put on some Bob Marley, we put on Yellow Submarine as the favorite at the moment, and we just like have a good dance. Uh, and that's a good way to start the day. I suppose there is a perspective of joy that I get through my daughter, but I also get it through teaching. There's just something thrilling about communicating ideas to other people, seeing ideas uh, be received and, and people's perspective changing, uh, change. And I actually feel like that's, I'm not on happy pills, but just I have that constant gratification of being able to play this wonderful role of teacher. Um, I wish this guy had a YouTube channel about coding. I would watch every day. No, well, that's very kind. Um, you know what we do do though, and this is probably, I should tell more people about this, is that in spring, uh, a few of us in the computer science department will put on this thing called Code in Place and we'll welcome people from the world to come learn the first half of 106A. We're trying to also explore futures of digital education. One of the things we care about is having lots of human beings involved in the teaching. So if you're interested in learning to code, if you're interested in learning how to teach uh, coding, come join this wonderful community service project um, in, the, in the spring. And, and maybe I'll talk to our colleagues, maybe the Stanford CS should think about having a YouTube channel. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> This guy just made me sign up uh, for a free coding class. That's the best. You rock on, have a wonderful journey. Enjoy the process, um, learn as much as you can. You might end up using coding as your job, or maybe it'll just supplant all the other, or it'll augment the other things that you're passionate about. Maybe it'll just give you new ways of thinking about the world, but it's a fun journey. I'm so glad you're on it, and I wish you all the best. Wow, he seems like such a great guy. I want to learn coding now. I always talk to my wife about this. I was like, the people on the internet are so nice. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and I just, uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate the positive vibes. I, I want to tell a story. <laughs> we taught code in place and we brought 10,000 random people. From, no, anyone could apply from anywhere in the world. And I talked to Stanford lawyers. They're like, this is gonna be a problem. You have 10,000 people. Like, something's gonna go wrong. Like, somebody's going to. But an interesting thing happened. I think we got there and we showed our passion and our inspiration. And it brought up this wonderful tone in the class. I think a lot of people then were really positive towards each other. And we set up this really cool vibe of education where everyone was helping each other. There wasn't so much competition. Uh, and I just, I love when that vibe spreads to the whole community. When the excitement about teaching and learning makes students treat each other uh, even better, when they feel the joy themselves. And I've mentioned this before, but what I'd love to figure out in my lifetime is what is the joyful future of education? Uh, not just the future of education we might walk into, but which one's gonna bring in the most, um, uh, both education, but also a wonderful experience for students. Cause I want that for my daughter. I want her to have a really great time learning. So anyways, I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you guys. You're fantastic. <laughs> Uh, Dilara says, what a nice feature. They chose the best person for this. Always nice to listen to you talk about coding and nice to see Carol too. 
Oh, that's so kind. I certainly wouldn't say they chose the best person. There's so many great people they could have chosen. Uh, all, uh, so my colleagues would have been just fantastic at answering these questions. Um, it kind of feels wrong to take credit for standing on the shoulders of such giants, uh, but I'm so appreciative for everything that they've taught me. And that goes back to, you know, teachers from a long ago to the teachers I get to work with now. And I wish I would send that message more. And somehow the Wired thing created a, a venue for that, but maybe the world just needs more venues for us to appreciate the teachers who, who have done great things for us. I can really rant. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great, yeah. <laughs>